Hey, what's up? David Cohen here with LearnFX and welcome back to another exciting Fusion tutorial. And this week we're going to be making some more advanced particle effects, something that looks like this. So let's get started. I'm going to go into my project settings and make sure that I selected HD 720, 1280 by 720 HD. And that's my project settings because this is uh, actually very intensive. So you can make it 4K, you can make it anything you want. And I selected 8-bit video depth. So I'm just going to click cancel because I already did and you'd want to click save. So first thing we need to do, we need to right click on our media pool, select like new fusion composition, five seconds long, 24 frames a second. That's pretty good. We're just going to click on create and we're going to drag this onto our timeline. Select the composition and we can head on over to the Fusion tab. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag our media out node all the way to the corner. Right click on the flow and select arrange tools to grid. Make sure that's checked and options select orthogonal pipes instead of direct pipes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a shape 3D. And we're going to just look at this in our viewer. And it's kind of hard to tell we're 3D here because we don't have the lighting. So I'm just going to right click and 3D options, select lights. And I'm just going to hold Alt so we can rotate around something. So the lights are on. And we're going to go into the shape and we're going to select cylinder. I'm just going to control middle mouse button to zoom out. So here is our cylinder. We need to go to the transform settings and for the X rotation, we need to set it somewhere around 90. All right, and we're going to go and we're going to bring up our subdivisions. Not that high, maybe something like this. And for the height, we're going to bring it down until we get it like a thin ring. It's almost not there. Just gonna control middle mouse and zoom in. Here's our ring. Maybe make it. No, I think the height's fine. Should be fine. So here's our ring that the particles are gonna be coming from. You can maybe make it 0 0.5, something thin like that. All right. So we have our ring. The ring is ready. Now for the actual particle, we're going to take a fast noise. We're going to drop it onto the flow. Send this to the viewer. And in the image tab, we're going to select 200 by 200. You can make it even smaller, like 100 by 100. Why isn't it? Oh, yeah, I forgot. You have to uncheck auto resolution, make it 200 by 200. So we have this small background. And since it's going to be the particle, we can make it even smaller, like 100 by 100, because it's just a particle. You won't even be able to see it. But I like this extra detail because when you get something too small, I tried 50 by 50 and it just wasn't cutting it. You don't have any detail at all. So I'm going to add a rectangle mask to this. And I'm going to move the rectangle over here. Control middle mouse button to zoom in. And I'm just going to make this small. Bring up the soft edge just a little bit. Make this even smaller. Yeah. So also there's this thing called corner radius that makes it like this. That's actually funny. So in the fast noise, we are going to go to our noise tab, bring up the detail, bring up the contrast, bring up the brightness, bring up the scale, something like that. Go to the color tab, and for the first color, we're going to select red. For the second color, maybe something yellow. So we get this like amber looking. Maybe we need to bring up the alpha as well. Just play around with the colors till you get some contrast looking thing. So here's our particle. The particle's ready. And now we actually need to bring in the particle system. So from the toolbar, I'm going to drag a particle emitter and particle render. And I'm just going to bring some space between them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the region tab of the particle emitter. And I'm going to select mesh. So that's very nice. And instead of volume, I'm going to select surface and bring up the random offset to something like maybe 0 0.1. It's actually even too high, so I'm just going to bring it something like that. So as you can see, that Fusion created a new input in the particle emitter called mesh input. So we're going to use the mesh, the shape that we created, the shape 3D. So here it is. If we were to look at it, we have a whole bunch of dots. 
So one more thing, we go back into our particle emitter and go to the style tab, this paintbrush over here. And we're going to select style from point. We're going to change it to bitmap. And as you can see, another input was created to the particle emitter. And we're going to use this fast noise. So here it is. We have this ring of particles like that. So one more thing. After the particle emitter, we need to add spacebar P vortex. Okay, so we have this, and we're going to hold on shift and drag this between the emitter and the render. So the vortex is kind of small, so we need to bring up the size like, by a lot. And we're going to bring up the strength, bring up the power. Let's see if we can get this. Perfect. So we're going to look at it, and as we can see, it's spinning. But the particles are not exactly affected by the physics of the vortex. So the issue is not in the particle vortex itself. What most people would think is you have to go into the, the actual issue is that you have to go into the particle emitter and go to the controls tab. And here you have rotation. And the problem is that we have absolute rotation. But we need to select this rotation relative to motion. And we need to turn off always face camera. So as we can see now, the particles are more affected by the vortex. Yeah. And I think it's probably. I think we should probably turn off the lights for a moment so we can actually see what we're doing. Because either way, the lights don't actually work in the render 3D. These are just the viewport lights, so they don't really do much at all. I just turned it on before so we could see the shape 3D. So after this P vortex, we should probably make probably make this mesh smaller because the vortex doesn't get any bigger. All right, so that's already starting to look more <laughs> like in the movie, but it's not done yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a P, directional force. All right, and as you can see, all the particles are going to start falling down now. That's not good. So we're going to bring down the strength and to think that this should be enough, but no. We're going to go into the probability tab and set the probability to 0 0.1. I think 0 0.1 should be enough. As we can see, it isn't. So I'm going to do 0 0.2. And that I don't think we should go any higher than that. I mean, as you can see, the particles are just moving to the side. Maybe we bring up the strength just a smidge. As you can see, the particles are moving and they're leaving. So one more thing, we should go to the particle emitter and go to the lifespan, bring it down, bring up the lifespan variance. So the particles die out before they can actually leave the frame. So we're going to add another P directional force. And instead of this direction, we're going to set it to probably about, I don't know, 50, 50 degrees. As long as it comes out in a different direction, really. I'm just going to control and we're going to see where it went and it's way too strong so we're going to go back to the probability tab set it to 0 0.15 so we have this bring up well the strength is actually fine so we shouldn't have that much of a problem so we have this one more thing we should add is probably um Particle turbulence, so P turbulence. I'm just gonna add that. So that just makes it look a little bit more natural. I'm pretty sure in the movie it was spinning in the opposite direction. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I actually didn't watch the movie. I just saw clips here and there. But I did like in the clips these actual particles, so I thought it should be easy to recreate in fusion. So I think we bring up the X, Y, and Z strength just a little bit. So yeah, basically that's it. So what we want to do is we want to select this shape 3D. And this is actually going to help us because we have these vertices here. And we just want to line up our view with the vertices, maybe control. No, we, this should be fine. And we're just going to bring this down. Alt. Okay, so this line should be straight into our view, like 
that. Something like this should be fine. Yeah. Now we're going to select this render 3D. And we kind of made a mess here, so we should probably clean things up before we continue. I like to keep the particle system going vertical instead of horizontal because it's easier for me to see what's going on. But since we aren't going to be adding any more tools, I think we should just bring this closer together. I don't think we'd be adding anything else for now. So here is our P renderer, and we want to grab grab a camera from this toolbar here and we're just going to drag it into the view and as you can see fusion added a camera but the funny thing is that fusion actually took the view that we had in the viewport and added it as the view of the camera which is very good for us that we don't have to play around with the camera for half an hour to get the perfect position and i'm just going to right click and i'm going to go back to perspective as you can see this is the view of our camera so if you say you want to change the view of the camera here, just want to you want to change the view of the camera like you didn't like it, right? So you just click right click on this perspective and you would go to copy point of view to camera 3D1. And I'm not going to do it because apparently there is no undo button in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. I mean, if you undo it for some reason, there are just some glitches that I encountered once and I don't want to do again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch this back to camera 3D1 and I'm going to go control space bar search for render 3D. So in our renderer we have something like this. So I'm just going to right click on the view and go to options, checkered underlay, turn it off. All right, so that's looking nice. Might want to bring up the number of particles just a little bit, maybe like make it 50 or 30. I'm gonna go with 30. See how well that goes. All right, so as you can see, that already looks better. All right, looks much better. Okay, one more thing is you know, you can play around with this directional force. Say, if you have a windy shot, you can just make it go in the direction of your wind. And it's actually very fun to play with with this turbulence. With the there are a lot of things you can play with here to make it look. But as you can see, that it wasn't exactly straight in the viewport because this is a little bit lower than it's supposed to be. But no matter, it shouldn't be a problem. So to this render 3D, I'm going to go control space bar, search for my favorite fuse actually, made by Brian Ray called X-Glow. And this is a free fuse you can get on React. But there is an optional donation if you want to if you want to help the developer. So as you can see, it looks very bright. So when you turn down the gain. Just a little bit. Bring up the fall off just just a smidge. Don't want it to go too high. Yeah, but this makes the playback a little bit slow. But it's already looking pretty good. I think we bring down the gain just a little bit more. I'll stop the playing because it's gonna crash if I keep playing it. So it's looking pretty good. So if you were to add this to your footage, you would have to camera track and you wouldn't render this actually. If you would camera track, you would just use it as a 3D element and and you could apply this to your shot and you would add a plane in behind it uh, with a mask, a softened mask. Or you can do this if your shot isn't moving, you can technically add it to, you can add it to static footage, but I don't think if you were filming from a tripod or something. But if you were to add this to, if you were to add this to moving footage, you would have to camera track, and that's a studio feature. That's a Fusion Studio feature. So I won't be showing you how to do that right now. Maybe in the future I'll be showing you how to camera track in a different tutorial, and go a little bit, make it a little bit more advanced. So we might even be using this element to camera track into the footage. No promises. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and after this, you just want to pipe this into the media out by the way and we didn't animate much so you don't have to curve out any splines or anything so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you like this tutorial if you enjoyed this tutorial please like share subscribe and i'll see you in my next tutorial thanks see you next time